Well, what a pleasure. I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by the APS President-elect, Matt Beasley. Dr. Beasley, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. No, it's uh, part of the job and I suspect it'll be fun. <laughs> so, President-elect, so yes. uh, what's your ambition for the role? For this role? Well, I think it's, it, it's actually, I think, an interesting situation in an organization like the American Physical Society because you have, you go through the presidential line and, you know, you're only president one year and it's hard to do anything in one year. So I think I certainly agree with the, the views of the presidential line and the operating officers that, you know, in this time of change, you just have to pay attention and you've got to get involved and, and do the things that are necessary. And so APS has had, uh, prior to my joining the presidential line, a strategic plan was put together. And now that strategic plan is being, uh, has to be implemented and there's a variety of task forces to do that. And they're going to come up with specific recommendations. And all those recommendations are going to come in just the year I'm a president. So I think I know my agenda is, is going to be. And uh, I, for example, are head, I'm heading the, the task force on development development in the sense of fundraising and so I think those kinds of things but also there is uh, this whole there's issues that are uh, in the you know, part of the climate of doing science now and one of them is this open access issue will journals be I don't want to say free but will they be made available early and so on and so forth uh, and of course just dealing with the federal government for funding of science we talk about dealing with the uh, federal government. As APS president, that I mean, would be a large part of your job. Well, the communication always is a large part of your job, but we have a Washington office which does that kind of outreach. So there's an arm of the APS which is deeply involved in government relations. And they, you, you work in tandem with them. So it's not as if uh, you're out there all, all by yourself. So, uh, but I think this is a strategic alignment of getting the president and that operation and everybody on the same page is particularly critical now. Is that an area that uh, worries you at all at the moment, the, the emphasis on the, the position of science funding? Well, sure, of course it does. Uh, and uh, it's uh, not to be glib, but anything could happen. I mean, things go bump in the night. I, again, I don't mean to be cute. And so you just have to watch it constantly and keep making the message that uh, it's a bipartisan thing, that science is good for the nation, and yet it still gets uh, you know, looked at and in ways that are uncomfortable. I mean, this is a great meeting, this March meeting, isn't it? I mean, people here from all over the it world. It is. I've been coming for 40 years or so. Hmm. <laughs> What for next year's meeting when uh, when you're uh, president? Have you had any thoughts on what oh, the themes I, might you, be? I'll, I'll give you a fantasy. <laughs> uh, I work in superconductivity, so I hope that next year at the meeting I will be able to announce uh, the discovery of a room temperature superconductor, and uh, so we may come to that later. But more seriously, I mean, this is the most successful of the meetings of, that the American Physical Society uh, manages. Uh, and uh, but it's very big, and so uh, you know that brings some issues. And on a, a more detailed level, the the, the, the uh, meetings are managed by the divisions who represent here. But but it is a goal of the American Physical Society to use the phrase we use is to reinvent the meetings. And what that means, I think, for the March meeting is we should be looking at all these modern communications things. I mean, the, your presence here and the organization you work for is an example of that. And I think that's a, a wonderful thing. And I think, you know, we were ambitious enough uh, that we would like to be the leaders in, in how you'd run meetings in the, in the going forward. And, and it's not exactly obvious how to do that. But that's not to say this isn't an enormously successful meeting. It sure, is. sure. I mean, talk a little bit about your own area of research superconductivity. I mean, what are you working on at the moment? Well, uh, uh, I suppose you could say I'm working on high temperature superconductivity. There are a lot of people working on high temperature superconductivity. However, there's two aspects to that. One is the present high temperature superconductors, cuprates and nictides and the whole litany. Uh, but I'm on the side that's looking for new ones. And there's a couple of reasons why. It's very hard to do that. 
Uh, and some of the, uh, I mean, there's a, I have the feeling anyway that there may be new ways. Theory may play a role. There's new ways to synthesize things. There's physical ideas that can be brought to bear. So the way it's done is changing, and I find that very interesting. Okay? <clears throat> And the other is, is this is uh, not so well known, that from the applied point of view, if we want in electrical applications, uh, power applications of superconductivity, uh, to operate above uh, liquid nitrogen temperatures or higher, we don't have one. The cuprates won't do it. We need a new material. So given, as a professor of applied physics, when I see fundamental issues and challenges, aligned with the applications. Bingo. <laughs> Dr. Beasley, you like a challenge, don't you? I do. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed for joining sure. us today. Sure, okay. We really appreciate I hope that it. you thank can you. edit that into something useful. <laughs> perfect, thank you. Okay.